Hi, this is Corey from Alpen Glow Base and Fiber Arts. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a yarn pom-pom to go on top of a beanie. The beanie that you're looking at here is my colorful Colorado beanie, and this pattern will be releasing in the next few weeks on my Etsy and Ravelry shop, and I'll also be creating and sharing a video tutorial on the step-by-step -step process to make this really super cute beanie. And when it does release, I will update the description for this video with all those links. Okay. The yarn we're going to be using today is the dark green color that I used in the beanie, and it is Brava Sport Weight Yarn, 340 yards per 100 grams. It is a number two sport weight classification, and uh, I used less than, a, than one skein for the hat. And so with that leftover yarn, we are going to make our yarn pom-pom. Another option, if you like a multicolored pom-pom, would be to use both of the greens in the, the colorful Colorado beanie and hold those two yarns together as you wrap on your pom-pom maker and you would get a multicolored pom-pom, which I think would be cute as well. But we're just gonna stick with one color. And I do want you to stick around to the end of the video where I promise to show you a trick that really saved my life when it comes to yarn pom-poms. I found that yarn pom-poms just fell apart so easily. And I found a trick that really prevents that from happening and you get a nice durable pom-pom that even stands up to the family cat. The other materials that you'll need for making our pom-pom is a pom-pom maker. I like the Clover pom-pom makers. This one is the three and three eighths inch. If you've never used one of these before, they look a little funny when you open them up and you're wondering what in the heck you do with this. I'll walk you through the steps of using this. The other thing to note is that it does pull apart. It's got a little post here that goes in the middle and that's important to know as well. You'll also need a yarn needle with a nice big eye and a pair of embroidery scissors. And I will leave links to all of these supplies down in the description. To get started, we'll open up our pom-pom maker. We'll just start on one side with the two sections together and aligned. I am right-handed, so I like to start down on this end and I just drape my yarn over the top of the little arch here and hold it. You won't have to hold it for long. Once you get a couple wraps on there, it'll stay. And then you just start wrapping your yarn around. And you can push that down so you don't lose it. And then you're just going to be evenly wrapping the yarn around the arches and filling this up, kind of sliding things over, trying to keep this aligned a little bit. And just keep adding yarn, wrapping and wrapping and wrapping for a long time. Some people like to count their wraps. I'm not very good at paying attention for that long. I'm basically just going to continue wrapping until I fill up the pom-pom maker and the yarn is even filling up all this space in here, even with those ends. Okay, so I'm not gonna bore you by what have you watched me do that. I'll go off camera and keep wrapping. Once I get to this end, I'll continue wrapping, going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until it fills up. Okay, so keep on wrapping and let's meet back here when we have it full. Okay, we're back and I have filled up my this half of my pom-pom maker. And as you, as you start to get to filling this up, the ends get hard to wrap, so you wind up concentrating more and more of your yarn in the middle to get it nice and even here with the inside end. I should say that um, you don't want your tension really tight. You don't want to be pulling on that yarn. So if you're fighting to get your yarn out of your center pole, I recommend pulling out a bunch of yarn so that it just lays on the table and you have less fight with your yarn ball. It just makes for a more even pom-pom when you're done. So once you have it relatively full, you just are going to snip off that end of yarn. And then you can go ahead and close this side of your pom-pom maker. And now we're going to repeat the process on the other side, filling it all the way up till it's about the same. And then we'll close this off and come back together to start the next step. All right, got my second side all full. Gonna snip the yarn here. And everything's closed up. The next step is to cut along 
the center point. So if I pull this back a little bit, you can see that V in the two sides of our pom-pom maker. And we're gonna cut right in between that V all the way across like that. Oop, I missed a couple. Okay, so we have one side that's opened up now and we'll do the same on the other side. Now we're gonna take a long length of yarn and I like to use, I don't know, 20 inches or so, just so I have plenty of yarn to work with. And we're just going to put the yarn right down into that little groove in our palm maker. And it will push down in there. You gotta give it a little push. It goes down in between the two sides of the maker. And we're gonna tie a knot. So we're going to loop the, the one yarn over the other like we would normally to tie, tighten that down, but do it a second time. And by doing it that second time, it actually makes it less likely to loosen up. And then you want to pull it down. You don't wanna break your yarn, obviously, but you do want that pretty darn tight. Okay, and then while it's tight, I'd flip it over and do the same thing one more time. Flipping it over once, flipping it over twice, and now tightening that down to the middle. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and do make a knot. So looping it over once, this time and making that knot, flipping it over. And this time I'm gonna make the knot twice since we've brought it around from the other side. There's once, and there's two times. So now our pom-pom should be fairly secure in there. And at this point, all we need to do is just open up our pom-pom maker on both sides. And now we're going to carefully just kind of wiggle this back and forth while we pull it apart so it pops open. And there we have our pom-pom. Okay, so here's the trick to make this hold together much, much better. And let me tell you a little story. I have a cat and I made four big, beautiful pom-poms for a baby blanket. And I used up all the rest of the yarn that I had. And then I folded up my baby blanket once the pom-poms are attached and left it in a spare bedroom, only to have my cat get a hold of one of the pom-poms and completely pull these yarns out. Because right now, these are just held here with a knot in the middle. And, um, you know, if I pulled on one of these, it would, it would pull it right out. And it would also loosen up that knot because I took one layer out. So these are very, very delicate um, as they are right now. But to give them a lot more durability, the way we're gonna do this is we're just going to put one of those tails on our yarn needle and shove it right through the thickest part in the middle of the pom-pom. We'll keep doing that several times, pulling it nice and tight each time, and just going in different paths, back and forth, so that you're popping out in all different spots. And by doing this, you're just creating almost a web inside the center of your pom-pom to hold everything in place. And if that tail gets a little short, you can always thread up the other side. Keep going. And I don't know how many times I do this. I do it, I guess, 10, 20 times, just until I feel like this center is really almost hard to get through with the needle and you feel like it's really bunched up in there. I think I'm done. And once again, I'm just gonna tie another knot and then give it a good shake, to fluff it back up again. Some of those ends probably got tacked down by the, by the yarn. And you can see now it's not quite as pretty as it was at first, but trust me, it is worth it. And this is really secure. You can even see that I can't really pull any of those out. They're nice and trapped in there now, even though I'm giving them a good tuck. Okay, so at this point, 
You're just going to want to trim to round out your pom-pom. And then when you're done, you'll have a pom-pom that you can attach to your beanie. Okay, I have given my pom-pom a haircut and you can see what's what came off. And now I am satisfied that it's fairly round and I'm happy with it. And I'm ready to attach it to the top of my hat. And I'm going to attach it temporarily. Even though we've made this pom-pom very durable, it's still not foolproof. If you need to wash this hat, the laundry, you're gonna to want to remove the pom-pom so that you don't have it turn into a fuzzy mess or have the individual yarns coming out and destroying your pom-pom. So I'm just threading my two ends onto a yarn needle and then finding a spot right in the middle, of the top of the hat, separating the two spots that I go in by a little bit of distance and then pulling that out. And now I'm going to hang on to those two tails and turn my hat inside out. Now I'm just going to tie a bow and I'm gonna tie it fairly tight because I don't want my pom-pom to be flopping around on the top of my beanie. But this is a very temporary means of holding this onto the hat. Now my, my ends are quite long, so I'm just gonna trim those off. So we don't need them that long. And this will just be, this bow will just set up in the top of the beanie. You'll never see it, it doesn't show through. And then when you go to wash it, you can just untie the bow and pull off your pom-pom and wash it up and then put it back together again. If you want a little nicer way of attaching this, I do um, sometimes also sew on a button on the inside of the top of the beanie. And then when I bring those legs through, I just wrap and wrap and wrap around that and tie a little bow around the button and so you don't have all these long ends. Or another thing you can do is thread some elastic through the center of your pom-pom and tie that in a knot securely and then just hook that elastic through from the other side and wrap that around your button to hold it there temporarily as well. So there's lots of different ways you can do it. But today, I just wanted to do a very simple method. And there you go. Again, if you're interested in this pattern, keep an eye on my channel. Uh, like, subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll be sure to notify you whenever I publish a new video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.